is the UK is the UK Financial Intelligence Unit podcast. Hello and welcome to another UK Financial Intelligence Unit podcast. I'm David Maguire, I'm a senior officer with the UK FIU and we have an international flavour to this podcast as we discuss a specific project that the UK FIU has led on alongside the Financial Intelligence Units of Australia and the Philippines. This was an Egmont Group project focusing on the threat from Online Child Sexual Abuse and Exploitation or CSAE and the financial flows associated with it. And in this podcast, we'll be looking at the nature of the threat, the joint working, and the best way to respond to this horrific crime. I'll be talking with Mel Rosella, the Executive Director of the Philippines Anti-Money Laundering Council Secretariat, Marcus Erickson, Director of Fintel Alliance with the Australian Transaction Report and Analysis Centre, Dave Cater, a National Crime Agency Regional Manager for Asia and the Pacific, and Denise Knapper, a manager in the UK FIU. As with all our podcasts, no active or sensitive operational work is discussed and panellists' opinions are independently theirs. So, Denise, your team led on this for the UK FIU. How did this project come about and what were its main objectives? So the topic of online streaming of child sexual abuse was presented to the Egmont Group Plenary in The Hague in July 2019. And the project was endorsed to enable FIUs to consider how financial intelligence could be collated and assessed to try and combat online streaming of abuse. So what we were hoping for and what we did achieve was to cover um, globally what the strategic intelligence picture looked like relating to financial flows associated with the online streaming of child sexual abuse. We were looking for um, any mitigation measures that we could put in place and identification of any risks that that activity um, held. We looked for the collation of a summary of operational data that had been exchanged with the project participant FIUs and law enforcement agencies and also for structured engagement with private industry as well. So this project looked at the global strategic intelligence picture on financial flows, identified through the receipt, analysis and dissemination of financial intelligence by the FIUs. What did the UK FIU bring to it? So the UK FIU has for a number of years now had in place quite comprehensive work stream algorithms looking for child exploitation related SARS, the keywords that we'd already built up, we were able to bring into the project to share with other FIUs, the glossary codes that we have in place with reporters to um, attribute to SAR submissions was really significant for us and we were able to relay that practicality of being able to identify SARS just through a glossary code was really useful as well and knowledge and experience that we have that's been enhanced with other internal departments within the NCA as well um, was really significant contribution the FIU brought. And for the benefit of listeners, the SAR glossary codes are codes which the UK FIU encourages reporters to include in their SARs relating to specific suspected criminality. Whilst inclusion of them isn't mandatory, they are considered good practice and they're crucial for enabling the UK FIU and wider law enforcement to conduct analysis, identify high-risk cases for development and to take immediate action where necessary. Denise, as you've alluded to, the project has identified financial indicators, keywords and data sets which can be used by FIUs and the private sector to identify financial activity linked to the online streaming of CSAE, more specifically the facilitators and offenders. My question is, what can SAR reporters do to help combat this crime? So I think with um, the actual act of streaming online child sexual abuse, it it commands a payment, It, it expects payment from the offenders. And with that payment, comes a financial trail. We can trace where money has come from, where it's gone to. We can identify the facilitators, we can identify the offenders. 
looking to try and um, safeguard victims as well. And the money laundering, um, it's an acquisitive crime. Money laundering comes as part of that criminality. Um, what we would be keen for, for my team, is for reporters to continue identifying any suspicious activity they believe links to child exploitation, to continue using the glossary code. We have shared the keywords that have come out of this project with um, private industry that were involved in the project. We're looking to also share with other reporting sectors. And it's really a plea for the material to keep coming in in the SAR notes that we come from. That's great, thank you. So before I move on to our other panellists, I just have to ask, what are the next steps? So we're really keen to continue um, the partnerships that we have with private industry and other project FIUs that were involved with this piece of work. We have got very close working relationships and we have our ideas on what we will be doing next. Um, and we're already seeing um, tactical opportunities that have arisen as a result of this project, and we'd hope to continue to see those arise, and also for just ongoing collaborative working with other FIUs internationally. It is a global threat. It is um, across all international boundaries, and private industry is a really big part in combating the exploitation of children. Marcus, we've heard from Denise there about next steps and opportunities arising from this project. From an Austrac point of view, how has this project differed from previous CSAE work that you've been involved in? For over a decade, Austrac's worked closely with law enforcement agencies to understand and target child sexual exploitation and abuse. Um, really embedding the financial intelligence into investigations and prosecutions. The establishment of the Fintel Alliance, which is a joint public-private partnership that brings together law enforcement, uh, government and financial industry partners, presented an opportunity in this space to really increase knowledge and effort around combating child exploitation. So with that in mind, the Egmont Information Exchange Program has really enabled Austrac to share the learnings that we've been able to garner from the Fintel Alliance with an international audience, learning from the experience of other lead countries like the United Kingdom and the Philippines and other participating countries as well. The sharing of insights around the operating environment, keywords, uh, some of the challenges and the importance of information sharing have been incredibly valuable um, in increasing efforts to combat child exploitation throughout the world. I think importantly, the release of the report publicly assists both financial institutions and the wider the kind of population to understand how money is moved by offenders and actions that can be taken to identify and report suspicious transactions importantly. Let's stay on that focus on financial intelligence and transactional data because we heard from Denise how important it is. How crucial are these in providing law enforcement with opportunities to take action against CSAE offenders? Uh, one of the kind of, I guess, challenges here is that the offenders do take a, a lot of steps to hide their activity um, from things like family members, friends uh, and work colleagues. They try to hide uh, essentially behind the computer. And this is what makes the financial information so important, is that sometimes it can be the only really evident indicator that someone is offending against young children. The Egmont Information Exchange Project and efforts by financial intelligence units uh, around the world have really demonstrated the important role that financial intelligence and transactional data can play both in identification, investigation, and all the way through to prosecution of those who offend against children. Um, I think we've really, uh, and through the project, demonstrated that financial institutions perform an increasingly important role in identifying and reporting activities that are indicative of offending against young children. This information is, is simply incredibly important in the fight against child sexual abuse and exploitation. Uh, identifying offenders that actively take steps to hide their activities while living in the community. Within Australia and increasingly around the world, the reporting of suspicious behaviour is being used to target individuals for investigation. Uh, this is leading to the identification of offenders that were not previously known to law enforcement or police 
uh, linking offenders in different countries and ultimately leading to the rescue of children. The reporting of suspicious matters linked to possible child sexual exploitation has increased significantly off the kind of work that is underlined within the project. And this has resulted in improved referrals to law enforcement. These referrals have directly resulted in the rescue of children, the arrest of offenders for a uh, kind of child exploitation offences. And uh, as we currently speak, there's multiple kind of investigations ongoing that have kind of been based off the financial information. Well, it sounds like there's a lot of very positive and tangible outcomes coming out of this project. What are the key points that you'd like private industry to take away to assist with future financial reporting? So the value of the Egmont Information Exchange project really is to increase awareness and the response to child sexual abuse and exploitation, I guess, among the wider, I guess, financial institutions and uh, reporting obligations. The project identifies the importance of monitoring and reporting suspicious behaviour to assist law enforcement efforts to identify and take action against offenders. The reporting of kind of collected information like user agent data to access the web uh, and what we're talking about here is things like browsers, operating systems, uh, all the way down to cookies, local storage or software, IP address information. This kind of information reporting has been really beneficial to law enforcement and supported law enforcement efforts. And these are one of the things that have been really drawn out in the project is that this enhanced reporting and this enhanced kind of due diligence around, uh, I guess, offenders uh, kind of is what can be generated by the financial intelligence that previously wasn't something that was kind of actively unearthed. Um, I guess in, in kind of summary, look, child sexual abuse and exploitation is a heinous crime. Uh, it impacts all aspects of the global community. And therefore, when we look at it, we really require a collective community response to ensure that we can deliver the best outcomes. Okay, so if we can turn to the Philippines now. We've just heard there from Marcus about Ostrak's experiences with this very worthwhile project and how it's clearly been a true partnership across the public and private sectors and between the various FIUs. Mel, what's been your perspective on this work and what would you highlight as a particular success? Our objective when we joined the project is to disrupt, if not eradicate, child sexual abuse and exploitation. Remember that the Philippines was tagged as the epicenter of online child sexual abuse in the world by UNICEF in its article in 2018. Hence, we did the following. We exerted efforts to understand the crime and we came out with the child sexual abuse and exploitation study which analyzed suspicious transaction reports covering the period 2015 to 2018. This study was able to identify and establish the modus operandi of uh, the child sexual abuse and exploitation, the channels of payment, the sources of funds coming from various countries, beneficiaries information, particularly in regard to locations, the age group, as well as the value range. The study likewise established typologies and we therefore concluded that disruption cannot be done by the Philippines alone. This global crime, just like drug trafficking, is fueled by demand committed in one country and supplied in another. Hence, our active participation in this project under understanding that expectation is very important in responding to the question. Hence, in response, the success that we can highlight is that not only are we as country able to disrupt the supply side by sharing the study with our law enforcement agencies and public-private partnership program partners, co-leading with the United Kingdom and Australia this project and sharing the study with our counterparts of more than 60 countries, we are also able to disrupt the demand side. Another success is the notable increase in participation by the private sector in the form of suspicious transaction reporting. Suspicious transaction reporting marked an 11,000% increase in the Philippines related to child sexual abuse and exploitation. 
from January to 20, April 2020 compared to the same period in 2019. And would you say that the AMLC's relationship with the other FIUs involved in the project has been further developed as a result of this? The project has encouraged and amplified collaboration among FIUs, in particular AMLAC's relationship or AMLC's relationship with other FIUs. And this is another particular success that the project has delivered. The 2019 AMLC study on child pornography paved the way for the creation of the Egmont Information Exchange Working Group on CSAE, or Child Sexual Abuse and Exploitation, bringing together the United Kingdom's Financial Intelligence Unit, Australian Transaction Report and Analysis Center, or AUSTRAC, which is the Australia's FIU, and of course the AMLC as project leads. Via this project, the AMLC study, which included approximately 700 identified persons of interest, was also shared with the other Egmont member FIUs. As a result, the AMLC has received feedback, including several referrals on new persons of interest. From these FIUs, leading to coordination and further sharing of information on previously and newly identified persons of interest. Currently, the AMLC is drafting a post-study report on CSAE to include new information and updates based on more recent suspicious transaction reports submitted to the AMLC. The post-study report will also measure the effectiveness of the actions taken by the AMLC together with other FIUs, law enforcement agencies, and the private sector. Would the AMLC be keen to get involved in other such projects in the future? The AMLC is very much open to participate in future projects related to child sexual abuse and exploitation, other crimes, and other topics of interest. In fact, the Philippines has always embraced coordination and collaboration given the country's international commitments. Sticking with the Philippines, if we can turn to you, Dave, as the NCA Regional Manager for the area. CSAE live streaming, as we've been hearing, is a global threat requiring collaborative international working. You do a lot of work with the Philippine Internet Crimes Against Children Centre, or PICAC, which is a joined up effort to combat child exploitation across the Philippines by law enforcement involving the NCA. How do you enhance these working relationships amongst the various agencies? The main way in which this has been enhanced is through this PICAC process, I think it's fair to say. So um, by, um, the, by the international partners, the UK, uh, the NTA and the, um, and the AFP um, working together to sort of understand which elements of the project we're best support uh, we're best placed to support um, in terms of which bits we provide so that we're not duplicating our effort as well um, but also uh, AFP have helped NCA with some of our relationships because they've been based and around in the Philippines for longer than the UK has um, and have some slightly longer established relationships so that's useful but ultimately the the project has enhanced everyone's working relationship and collaboration by bringing everyone together in in one place under one process um and um as we uh, are keen to kind of point out to to anyone who's interested um, around the world who may have uh, a, um a, an osec issue that that originates or is based in the philippines um the PICAC is open to anyone, so it's not just for those uh, foreign um, law enforcement partners who've who've invested, you know, financial support. It's it's a it's a platform for everyone. So um, if there's casework to be brought forward, and we and we do get uh, casework from lots of other countries, um, they can submit their referrals into the process uh, and be confident that it will actually have um, somebody will look at it and. Um, and triage it and it will go through exactly the same process as all the other cases. So I think that's probably where the most enhancement has, has come from that process. Um, it's also fair to say that um, the 
um, the, the 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 collaboration that we've established around the PICAC and the and the OSEC child exploitation work, uh, online exploitation work, um, has helped certainly the NTA's relationship um, with other parts of law enforcement, maybe not necessarily related to that. Um, uh, and and probably for AFP as well, I think it's fair to say. So um, it's opened a few other doors. Um, the other part that's really worth bearing in mind um, is that um, the this concept of the PICAC is quite is is a new thing. And whilst there are other sort of task force type uh, efforts around the world to do, you know, in different maybe in different areas of criminality, um, I think this is probably the first one that's been done like this from a point of view of OSEC, live streaming and child abuse. Um, so we're, we're trying to use um, the NTA's um, status as an ASEANAPOL dialogue partner to, to introduce this, certainly within the region, the ASEAN region, uh, as a kind of centre of excellence model, which uh, other, um, uh, other partners could, uh, could follow or other countries could follow. Now, um, some of that might not directly translate into the OSEC and live streaming threat that we see from the Philippines, which is quite specific. But um, uh, there's lots of other areas in the uh, in the region, lots of other countries in the region that um, have a have a issue from travelling sex offenders, whether they're from the UK or the other sort of Western countries, who tend to be the uh, uh, the main the main culprits. So. Um, it, it, in that way, it, we're also trying to use it to enhance relationships as well. And for the benefit of listeners, the acronyms AFP, OSEC and ASEAN stand for Australian Federal Police, Online Sexual Exploitation of Children and the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Dave, how important is the financial data contained within SARS or Suspicious Transaction Reports, STRs, to operational law enforcement teams? That's very important. Um, the the use of the financial data from from the transactions uh, helps to identify the profile of where um, abuse might be taking place. Um, so um, and uh, that helps build up a pattern of who potential offenders are. Uh, it's not an exact science um, because people basically send money around the world for a variety of reasons much of which is legal, but um, there are clear patterns that are established by looking at the financial data and the transactions that might point to the fact that a, an individual is paying for um, uh, uh, online abuse um, uh, through, through, through the use of, uh, um, of a fairly small but regular payment. So, so that's essential. Um, and so most casework at the PIC Act features use of that that uh, that data now sometimes it originates from that data so we might collate um, there might be an exercise to collate you know a, a a large amount of transactions linking to individuals names or addresses or either in say for example in the uk or the us as well as in the philippines as the receiver of the payment um, so it could originate from that or alternatively we may have other uh, other leads which uh, suggest a person is is possibly involved in in, in OSEC um, or uh, live streaming work, and then you know the next step is to obtain the um, the data, uh, the STR data um, linked to that person's name, um, or or an account, or a phone number, or, or um, you know an address. So um, uh, so the two things combined make an essential part of the process of uh, of the investigation to help to determine yes that looks like a pattern it seems appropriate that, that these people are probably involved with with uh, with child abuse and then combined with some of the other intelligence gathering techniques that that the team are able to use that that it makes an essential part of the picture um, so um so yeah very uh, very important so the Egmont project has identified transactions which might indicate where online abuse has been taking place. How will it be turned into tactical opportunities? Transactions that might indicate um, where online abuse has been taking place. So uh, in exactly the same way as the work that we already do routinely, um, 
this should give us you know uh, a, a set of data set of potentially names or account users uh, which give us lead points to to look at for uh, potential um, uh, identified potential victims and facilitators um, the because it has taken a while that, that there is concern that um, some of the data might be out of date now but um, but ultimately, it's the same process that we are following regularly. So, um, so yeah, it's uh, it's potentially um, could be useful. More strategically, um, it it could be used to see bigger patterns and potentially identify maybe a link to other countries that were possibly weren't known about before, not just the UK, um, but by following the trail from the UK into a facilitator in the Philippines and then back out again, it's quite possible that that facilitator is also interacting with people in other countries. So the data is useful in that way. And it can then be shared with other international partners for them to take an appropriate action um, uh, in their own countries, uh, you know, if necessary. Thank you, Dave. And in fact, thank you to all our panelists today, Mel Asella, Marcus Ericsson, Dave Cater and Denise Napper. You can learn more about this project in a report entitled Combating Child Sexual Abuse and Exploitation Through Financial Intelligence, which is available from the Egmont Group website. There is still a lot of important work to be done on this subject, but it's important to reiterate before we sign off that offenders pay to access CSAE materials via online streaming, which means that there is a money trail to follow for the payments and profits. Don't forget, you can provide us with feedback and suggestions for future podcast topics via our Twitter and LinkedIn pages. And these sites are the best place to keep up to date with our upcoming podcasts, webinars and other products. So until next time, I've been David Maguire and this has been a UK FIU podcast. This is the UK. This is the UK. This is the UK. Financial Intelligence Unit Podcast.